Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm diving into the crucial topic, the difference between primary and secondary fermentation in mead. Did you know that this knowledge can make or break your mead? Stick around as we uncover the secrets to perfecting your mead. Before we dive in, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on the best tips and tricks to make amazing mead. And as a special thank you for watching, I'm giving away my free ebook, Mead Making at Home Easily. It's loaded with my step-by-step -step process and advanced techniques to help you craft exceptional mead. Stay tuned until the end of the video to find out how to grab your copy. Now, let's jump in. When you first combine your honey, water, and yeast, you kick off what's called primary fermentation. Usually, primary fermentation starts within the first 12 to 48 hours after mixing everything. You'll notice bubbling, foaming, or active movement in your airlock, all signs that fermentation is underway. If fermentation doesn't start within two days, your yeast might be inactive, possibly due to temperature issues, yeast health or quality, or pH problems. Primary fermentation is the most vigorous phase, typically lasting anywhere from two to eight weeks, depending on factors such as yeast strain, temperature, and sugar content. Yeast actively converts sugars from the honey into alcohol and carbon dioxide, causing plenty of bubbling and activity. Watching your airlock is one of the easiest ways to track fermentation process. Rapid bubbling initially, slowing down significantly toward the end. Here's something interesting. During the first few days of fermentation, the yeast is in an aerobic phase, meaning it thrives with oxygen. This is why some mead makers recommend stirring the must gently in the first three to five days to introduce more oxygen and help the yeast multiply effectively. However, after this point, oxygen exposure becomes a problem. Once fermentation moves past this stage, you want to avoid introducing oxygen or air, as it can lead to off flavors or even spoil your mead. Maintaining steady fermentation temperature, usually between 60 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 centigrade to 24 centigrade, is another critical factor. Higher temperatures can lead to harsh solvent-like flavors like fusel alcohol, while lower temperatures can slow fermentation or even cause it to stall. Keeping things stable ensures the yeast works efficiently and gives you a cleaner tasting mead. So how do you know when primary fermentation is finished? The simplest method is observing your airlock. When bubbling slows significantly to about one bubble every few minutes or stops entirely, you're likely done. However, that's not always the case. Using a hydrometer to measure your gravity is the most reliable method. If your readings remain consistent over several days, primary fermentation is usually complete. For more in-depth information on exactly when fermentation is done, be sure to check out my other detailed video. The link is in the description below. Once primary fermentation has run its course, it's decision time. You can either rack your meat into a clean container to begin clearing, or you can move it into secondary fermentation, which allows your meat to develop more complex flavors and aromas. Secondary fermentation isn't as vigorous, but it plays a key role in refining your mead. Here, about 30% of the remaining alcohol production occurs, along with subtle chemical transformations that smooth out flavors. For example, malic acid, naturally present in fruits, gradually converts into lactic acid, which creates a softer, rounder taste. This is one reason why aging mead for months or even years results in a more refined, well-balanced drink. During this phase, secondary fermentation also releases residual CO2 from the primary stage. This gradual gas release helps remove sharp carbonic bite from your mead, making it smoother. Keeping an airlock in place during this process is crucial as it allows CO2 to escape while preventing oxygen from sneaking in. Oxygen exposure at this stage can lead to oxidation, off flavors, or in worst case, turn your mead into vinegar, something no mead maker wants. As secondary fermentation progresses, you'll notice more sediment or less settling at the bottom of your vessel. This is completely normal and a sign that your mead is clearing. Racking your mead every few weeks helps separate it from the sediment, improving clarity and flavor. However, one common mistake is racking it too often. Doing this can disturb the settled particles, leading to cloudiness. Patience here pays off. Now let's talk about adding ingredients. Some mead makers prefer to add fruits or spices or other flavors during primary fermentation, while others wait until secondary. Adding them in secondary preserves more delicate flavors and aromas, since there's less vigorous activity pushing those aromas out through the airlock. Plus, at this point, alcohol is already present, offering some natural protection against bacteria. Another consideration is your yeast choice. 
Different yeast strains ferment at different speeds, have various alcohol tolerances, and contribute to distinct flavor profiles. Some create dry, crisp meads, while others leave a sweeter, fuller taste. Experimenting with different strains is an enjoyable way to refine your brewing style and achieve the exact flavor profile you want. To put this all into perspective, let's consider an example. Suppose your mead starts with a gravity of around 1100, aiming for about 13 to 14% alcohol. After about three or four weeks, your gravity might reach 1010 to 1020, indicating primary fermentation is complete. At this point, you could rack your mead and begin secondary fermentation, allowing additional flavors to develop while your mead clears. Adding fruit or spices now can gently restart fermentation, boosting complexity and depth. Mead making is as much an art as it is a science. Every batch teaches you something new, and there's no single correct way, only the method that works best for you. Whether you prefer to experiment with different yeasts, adjust your fermentation timelines, or tweak your ingredient additions, the key is to enjoy the process and keep refining your craft. Now, as I promised, you can grab my free ebook, Mead Making at Home Easily, using the link in the description or the pinned comment below. It's packed with my personal mead making process and advanced techniques to help you craft great mead. For the ultimate guide to mead making, check out the Practical Mead Maker. This comprehensive ebook takes you from beginner basics to expert techniques, all in a clear, easy to follow style. Whether you're just starting out or refining your craft, this is your go-to resource. You can grab your copy now using the link in the description or the pinned comment below. So whether you're fine-tuning your techniques or scaling up recipes, exploring new styles or troubleshooting fermentation, I've got you covered. So check out my other videos where I break down every step of the process from advanced methods to perfecting flavor profiles. So you have everything you need to craft exceptional mead. Click here to explore my mead making videos and playlist. Also, drop a comment to share your experiences, ask questions, and let me know how your mead turns out. I'd love to hear from you. Also, if there's a topic you'd like me to cover in a future video, also let me know. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy mead making.